For as long as humans have been building civilizations, we have been reliant on one very special ecosystem. From Egypt to China to Mesopotamia, many of our most ancient cities depended on the river ecosystem for food, water, and transportation. Even now, in modern times, rivers are among the most economically and ecologically important ecosystems around. Welcome back, explorers. In this special two-part adventure, we'll be learning all about the river ecosystem, including what characteristics define these places, what organisms we can find here, and why they matter to you and me. In this first part, we'll be looking at river structure and formation, and in the second part, we'll be looking at river food chains. These are some of my absolute favorite places to go exploring, so let's jump right in and learn about the river ecosystem. Even the largest rivers start with a network of smaller springs, streams, and creeks called tributaries, which eventually connect to create one large flow. Many of these smaller tributaries are like many rivers of their own, and are much easier to study and film. We'll be using this tributary of the Yadkin River to learn about the abiotic, or non-living components of the river ecosystem. To start with, it's important that we know how rivers are defined. For one thing, rivers contain flowing water, and usually lots of it. Most rivers have a clearly defined channel where the water flows, as well as river banks, which are dry areas of land on either side of the channel. The actual course of the river may change over time, but these two key components are nearly always present. Both provide important habitat for many plants and animals. As the water that makes up rivers and their tributaries flows across the landscape, it picks up components of the terrestrial ecosystems that it passes through. This means that rivers often contain a wide variety of soils, minerals, nutrients, and organic matter from many different locations. These new materials being added to rivers can be a very important part of their ecology, ensuring that there's enough nutrients to support the complex food chains which we find here. However, this also means that any pollutants or silts can get into the water from surrounding areas and contaminate the entire ecosystem. Pollutants can include toxins such as arsenic or lead, which are dangerous for both aquatic organisms and humans, or silts, which cloud up the water and block sunlight from reaching the organisms living in it. We call the process by which water picks up and moves materials erosion. Yeah. We can clearly see erosion when we look at places on the riverbank like this, where it looks like the water is cutting into the ground. Now over long periods of time, erosion is the process that creates huge geological features, such as canyons. Deposition is when materials that have been picked up by the water are then placed somewhere else, usually when the water slows down. We can see an example of deposited materials right here, where the water has slowed down and left lots of sand behind. Both erosion and deposition are processes that have huge impacts on how river ecosystems look and how the organisms in them live. They can also have serious consequences on human behavior, because who wants to build a house somewhere that is being eroded away by a river? That's one of the reasons that we are constantly tracking where water is flowing and what impact it is having on the land around it. Every drop of water that falls from the sky as precipitation will eventually make its way to a river. By tracking where the water in a certain area ends up, we can map out an area called a watershed. All the water in this location will find its way to a specific river, and eventually the ocean. Understanding watersheds is very important, because if we don't know where the water in a river is coming from, we have no idea where pollutants or new species could be coming from. Watersheds are usually huge, covering hundreds of miles of land. That means that our river systems are taking in huge amounts of material as they flow throughout the landscape. Even if a piece of trash isn't directly dumped in a river by me or you, it still ends up there, either during a rainfall event or by getting washed into a tributary. The study of water and how it moves is known as hydrology. It is just as important as ecological studies when dealing with a river ecosystem. If you don't understand how rivers form and what makes them unique, 
it is difficult to understand why the organisms found within these systems look and act the way they do. The most important things to remember from today's episode are that rivers are areas of moving water with a clearly defined channel and stream banks in that they contain pieces of all the terrestrial ecosystems around them. In the second part of this video, we'll be taking a look at river food chains and meeting some of the incredible plants and animals that we can find here. Until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report, signing out.